Hello, in this video I want to look at shape and form and I've come to a place that has got lots of shapes in it. Studying shape and form for photography purposes is an incredibly valuable exercise and it's one that a lot of us probably need to indulge in a little more. It's all part and parcel of learning how to see things, how to create images out of absolutely nothing. It's geometric, it's mathematical, it's art if you like. Is that too pithy? I don't know. But it's kind of how it is, isn't it? You know, uh, it's what we do. So I've come here back to Cromer, one of my local seaside towns to shoot shape, shape and form. It's something that I've done an awful lot of over the years and I suppose when I'm a little uninspired perhaps it's one of the things I'll always go back to because it's always there. Now of course you don't need to come to a seaside town like Cromer to photograph shapes because they're everywhere. I, you can't do anything without seeing shapes. But perhaps some of the shapes here are a little different. Perhaps they're not. These things are going to be pretty much everywhere. Yeah, you might not have these fishing boats wherever you live, but that doesn't matter because there'll be shapes in the, the cars, in the windows of the cars, the mirrors of the cars, the wheels of the cars, the handles, the door handles of cars. Uh, so, yeah, here in Cromer I've got lots of boats and tractors and all these kind of things and you might not have that back where you are. You might say, well, there's no shapes here. Well, of course, that's not true. There are shapes everywhere. You just need to go out and find them. Along with shape and form, we also get texture. And if we combine all of these things together, we can create some really interesting photographs. Now, over the 20 years or so that I've lived here, I've shot these tractors quite a lot. I don't always get a great shot. Do we ever? Do any of us get great shots all the time? We can't be perfect, let's face it. But there are elements of these tractors that really do offer some amazing photo opportunities. And the wheels and the tires are just one of those things that are really worth shooting. Of course, there's a lot of light here. I can shoot this handheld, but I'm not going to. The key thing with shots like this is that you have to be pretty precise because it's, it's a circle at the end of the day. Uh, the circle itself is pretty perfect as circles go. And if you take a photo of a perfect circle uh, that's got the wrong angle on it, boy, does it look weird. So I've got to use the, the tripod for this. I need to get the camera pretty much central with the hub. So let's uh, just get the legs down and we'll work it out how to do that. That's a little low, but, <clears throat> but it being low is okay because I've got the center column and I can bring that up. And now the adjustment is rather easier. Oops, <laughs> unless you don't tighten it properly, of course. This is often where it goes wrong, isn't it? Because if you're not pretty precise with this, and I am now using the frames on my screen, I've got the screen set up to show me uh, uh, thirds. I need to make sure that the camera's level, which it isn't, so as I bring the camera up to, to roughly level using the meter, I find that I'm no longer actually square to anything. And of course, I don't know that that wheel is square either. It's pretty much guaranteed not to be. That's not so bad. I'm quite happy with that. So you can see that I've set the camera up to a square aspect ratio on this. Reason being, of course, that it's the closest I'm gonna get to um, a circle, so to speak. It's geometric, it's nice and, uh, and even, and I don't want to get in bits of the, uh, uh, the tractor here. And indeed on this side of the tire, we are getting a great deal of 
light flare off this aluminium boat behind. So in order to cut that out, square crop makes it easier and uh, it's quite a nice shot. Do bear in mind, of course, that the images of these wheels works predominantly because of the texture and the colour and perhaps also the, the strangeness, the unusualness of them. If you go and shoot just a car wheel, I think you've got to be rather more creative with it. Often when we're talking about capturing shape and form, we're talking about capturing small parts of things. I've spoken about this in videos before, I call it taking photos about things rather than photos of things. It's an important mindset to have. Over here, piles and piles of rope for all of these fishing boats around us. They're wonderful things, but as a photograph of lots of rope, it's boring as hell. It's as confusing as a snap of woodland. But when you start honing in on some of the detail, then you can get some real humdingers of an image. Humdingers of an image? Does that work? You know what I mean. So for these rope shots, I'm going to go handheld because I don't need to be 100% accurate with the positioning because, let's face it, they're, uh, they're abstract. The positioning is important, but a millimetre or so off doesn't make a lot of odds. Here I'm just focusing on a knot. Uh, I've left this in the aspect ratio of uh, 1 to 1, and I don't... Do I want to do that? Now, here's the thing. Do I want to do that? I'm going to because the camera will shoot um, in a, an open 4-5 aspect ratio, isn't it 4-3 or whatever. It's normal aspect ratio. And it will save that as, um, a, as a raw file. And it will also save the JPEG in the crop aspect and save the crop detail to the raw file as well so uh, Lightroom and other software knows what I shot it in so I have the best of both worlds let's just talk very briefly about aspect because when we're talking about taking photos about things rather than of things a square crop really does work very well because it helps you focus more it helps you remove extraneous detail that perhaps you don't want there and uh, it's something you should consider doing and I'm just going to do that with the, this rope here. There's a, a nice hawk of it here with this knot on it. It's providing some interesting detail. And stop down to F11 because I, I try to want to get some detail in this. I've taken the gloves off just because it makes things easier. It's, it was incredibly cold further out earlier on, but it isn't so much now because the, uh, the weather's moved. There was a, a, one hell of a storm out to sea. In actual fact, I took a photo uh, of a boat that's out there to sea with the storm kind of coming into it. One of the things you need to be mindful of when shooting like this, where you're kind of shooting through something with a bit of a background, is uh, how deep you want that depth of field. And uh, I would argue you don't want it terribly deep because you want the focus all on this. Now, that is, of course, if you've even got any background on it. I'm choosing to have a little bit here, which I'm throwing out of um, out of focus. F5.6, it's not a bad shot. I'm gonna do some more. Don't limit yourself to things that are close up either. 
this aluminium boat here is really very interesting in its shape and form. And because we've got light catching just the top of it now, there's quite an interesting shot of that. But I'm still providing a degree of isolation on it as well, so that we are filling the frame with the subject. Filling the frame is a technique that is often given to newbie photographers because it focuses their minds and it focuses the viewer because effectively you have just one subject in the frame and uh, there can be no conflict between foreground, background, anything else. You know what you're supposed to be looking at and that's what I've got here. It doesn't have to be just a, a noob approach to it. Filling the frame is a perfectly legitimate way of shooting anything and it works brilliantly with these kind of detail shape and texture form shots. Now I quite like it in colour, but what about monochrome? Which do you prefer? I'm going to go in search of some more shapes further down here. I'm going to look at shapes that are kind of built into the area rather than things that kind of trundle up here as part and parcel of everyday work life for a fisherman. Okay, I lied, just a tiny lie, because as I was walking back, I saw this pile of white net here, and it's absolutely full of little tiny beads of water from the sea. It's lovely, and uh, I can't ignore that. shapes that are built into the environment as well are interesting. Take these steps up the cliff here. I shot uh, one or two of these the other day and I'm really rather pleased with it. Looking at them here, I'd argue, well, you know, it doesn't look a great deal, but you get a big zoom on that and just pick out the detail, particularly the detail where the steps come around and return. It's very interesting. Have a look at this one. And also, there's more of them around the corner. And then there's this staircase. This is a wonderful, wonderful flight of stairs. I've shot this on and off for many years. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to get images that are very special, very geometric, very structural. Just, it just shape, it's texture, it's form. I love this staircase. It works incredibly well. So you can see how I'm shooting this camera. Very stable, could do it handheld, but I want to focus stack it because I want this handrail to be sharp all the way through, along with everything else, of course. Have a look. There's a certain type of beauty to this walkway which takes us down to the, the beach under the pier. It's just a concrete mass but it's got such lovely sweeping lines to it that makes it so photogenic. And I've shot this many times and different lights. And again, I'm not going to shoot it now because the light isn't quite right. We've got a little bit of reflection just maybe at the sea on the, the uprights coming down from just over there as the sun's beginning to get a bit of colour in the sky. But it's so much nicer when the, uh, the light is very different from this. So I'll show you some shots that I've got of this from a different time. I 
just love the bruceless appeal of the scene. There's also these steps up the cliff from the, uh, from the promenade here. And uh, again, just lovely zigzaggy. And as you can see, I've just set the tripod up with a bit of framing, just waiting for someone to come down and get in the shot where, my, where I'm framing is with the lamp post on the left-hand side. And I'm waiting for someone to balance it out by walking over into the right hand side of the shot. I've got one or two already and uh, I'm getting a little chilly here so if no one comes in an interesting coat in a little while then I might just uh, leave it at that and show you the ones I've already taken but uh, getting late in the day now so there are fewer people around. Thank you for joining me on Cromer Beach. If you'd like to come here yourself, don't forget I have holiday cottages just a short way from Cromer itself. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week. Like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff.